Hi, this is Eric from longboxreview.com, and this is The Gutters, uh, my audio journal. Today is May 21st, 2019, as I record this, and I can't believe it's been two months already since I last released a Gutters episode. Um, I'm going to say that nothing was going on (laughs) in the last two months to really uh, talk about. I know I was... I think I, I mentioned that I my plan was to do these the audio journal gutters episodes like every two weeks just to kind of get some stuff out there and talk about some more personal stuff. But uh, I don't know. Um, just I don't know. I, I, I don't know why I didn't do uh, another episode. I just didn't feel like there was anything, wor- like I said, worthy of really talking about. And I really wasn't doing all that much. But there has been some stuff kind of building up um, that, uh, you know, in uh, collected all together. Here is my info dump <laughs> for you. So uh, what's been going on? So let's see here. Let's let's just start with the boring stuff. Um, uh, uh, what's going on with me physically, health wise kind of things. I, I did a I did a, a wellness check. Uh, uh, what else do they call them? Um, a physical type thing, you know, because I I did turn 50 at the end of last year. And, uh, you know, that was all fine. Uh, I'm in good health. Uh, Except my doctor decided that I needed to exercise more, which, you know, true, but um, never something that I want to do, (laughs) just like, you know, everybody else on the planet for pretty much. But uh, she said I need to basically walk every day, 30 minutes every day. And also do some strength um, exercising, build up my my muscles and 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 whatnot. So, to do that, I did start walking a little bit. Uh, I wasn't doing it regular regularly. Uh, I was trying to, but um, uh, but then this thing at work came up, and so uh, the 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 uh, group that I belong to. Uh, not the department that I run, but the the larger group that my department belongs to, decided to do some activities, try to drum up, I guess, some group involvement. And one of the ideas was to do some challenges. One was a walking challenge. One was a drink water challenge. There's some a few others. And uh, I have to say, I'm usually loath to participate in things like that. But uh, because of uh, my doctor's recommendation uh, to walk, I decided that I would go ahead and do this, uh, which means that, uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a walking challenge. It's really, well, it's really a number of steps challenge. Um, I'm just doing it through, you know, the normal means of walking. And, and so um, uh, my goal is to do 10,000 steps a day, and I'm not getting enough steps in at work as, as I'm working. And walking to meetings and stuff like that. Um, really, what I need to do is actually take a break and just kind of walk around the building to to build up some steps. But anyway, to make up for that lack of of, of steps at work, I've been coming home and going for a walk after dinner. And so, for it started out at thirty minutes, then it was forty minutes, and now it's about an hour. And so I get out there and just walk my dog and uh, uh, do those steps. And so um, that is a one partial reason why I haven't been doing um, or releasing um, podcast episodes in in the main long box review feed, because I've been busy walking. (laughs) And I don't want to stay up late in the evening to to record. And I'm just generally tired uh, after doing that walking. So there's that. So, you know, that at least I'm I'm doing that now, uh, and oh, and and this is for a month. the uh, The challenge was to do this for 30 days. So the month of May, uh, we I've been doing this. I've only missed three or four of the days so far. Where I mean, I, you know, I walked, but I didn't, you know, walk uh, like I just described. So um, I haven't met my goal for I think about four of those days. But you know, I had good reasons. Um, you know, there was Mother's Day, and I I spent my day with my wife, and and uh, didn't really do anything besides that, except what she wanted to do, which which wasn't a whole lot, uh, at least walking around type stuff. Um, you know, we we basically watched movies and uh, did stuff around the house. So 
uh, there's that, and there's, there's just some other days like, uh, well, there's we we went to a concert. I'll talk about that later. You know, we just didn't really get out and and do a whole lot uh, for some of those days. But anyway, talked a lot about walking. I'm done talking about walking. <laughs> the other thing uh, that my doctor wanted me to do, and so and and uh, in relation to that, I, I tweeted out recently that I, I feel like my doctor is secretly trying to kill me because she wanted me to do. Uh, she recommended for the strength training to do the seven minute workout. And uh, I think I have talked about this this uh, workout approach on a previous gutters episode when I was talking about uh, the science versus podcast. they had uh, they had an episode where they examined the seven minute workout. you know, what is it? Is it successful? you know does it does it actually? Uh, benefit you if you do it, and I think I think the answer was yes, you know to some degree. But so I was kind of surprised when my doctor uh, suggested me doing this. So you know I go home and I and I look it up again. You know after I listened to the Science Versus episode, I looked it up. But this time I'm like, okay, there's got to be an app for that, right? There's an app for everything. So I I, I look through uh, some apps that are available. Uh, you know because I figure you know what better way to help motivate me and keep me um, going with it if I have an, an app to help me, uh, because apparently that's the kind of person I've turned into um, in my advancing age. But anyway, uh, I did find this app. It is it is the, I have to look it up on my phone here real quick. It is, it's just called Seven, um, and it seems to be one of the more popular apps on uh, the in the iTunes app store, and I got it, and I really like it. Um, it does help there's some variety there. Um, uh, I like the animation showing the, the, uh, the exercises as I'm doing it. There's, there's, uh, there's some settings in there. I like you can alter them. For example, uh, the default is it gives you 10 seconds between each exercise. And that gives me in my, my, my lumbering slowness that I, that I am, uh, moving from doing push ups to doing sit ups or something. Uh, it gives me a little bit of time to actually <laughs> get in in position to do that and so but uh oh i forgot to i forgot to <laughs> way to bury the lead um uh so what i do for what you do for this seven minute workout is you work out for about seven minutes and what you do is you do 12 exercises for 30 seconds each with a 10 second um, uh, break in between but the point is is that you like all out do this this exercise for those 30 seconds and, uh, and, but you get this variety, you get some, you get some cardio, you get some strength resistant, you know, pushups and stuff like that. Um, uh, running in place, jumping jacks. I mean, there's a lot of different things. That's the traditional or the, the original seven minute workout. And then there's a lot of different, uh, variations of, of that theme, uh, that goes along with it. And so this app, uh, allows you, allows me to, um, uh, do a bunch of different things. Uh, unfortunately, that app wants me to pay eighty dollars a year to access, you know, all the stuff that uh, I would like to have access to, and uh, otherwise, I'm pretty much left to do just the original seven minute workout, the, those those original twelve exercises. And now, every day, there's a new set of exercises I can do. But um, but it goes away after that day, and so uh, even though I found another set that I really like that I thought complemented the original set, so I would do. So I'm trying to do this three times a week, no, four times a week on the weekend, and then Tuesday, Thursdays. Uh, again, according to my doctor, he, she wanted me to do at least three times a week, if not four. So I'm uh, um, so I'm I'm not I'm not all that keen on on you know paying eight dollars a year for for something like this. Uh, so I was looking for alternatives, and I found this other one that was recommended in an art- in an article that I looked up, and this is from Johnson and Johnson called the Seven M Workout. So it's their own version of this, but uh, this one is a free app, and it does give you a bunch of different exercises that you can do uh, and and alternate through. the The, the problem is is that it's not as uh, I can't adjust the settings. Like they only give me a five second. Um, transition time, and I, that's not enough time for me. 
<laughs> apparently yet. Uh, but uh, I'm working at it, and I, I just I just, I don't like the the animations. I, I mean, I guess technically they're videos of this of, uh, this guy showing you the exercises, but. Um, if I'm unfamiliar with an exercise, I'm already 10 to 15 seconds into my 30 seconds to understand what it is I'm supposed to be doing. And, uh, I'm, you know, I can pause it and, you know, whatever, start it over. But that's not the point. So it's got some issues with it, but at least it's free. Um, anyway, so uh, what I get out of this is, uh, you know, like I said, I'm building up, doing some exercising. Uh, by the end of the seven to eight minutes that I'm doing this, I am breathing hard. It, it is, I mean, it really gets your heart pumping. Uh, I'm sweating. Uh, may have you know may say more about my physical condition right now than anything else, but I feel like I'm actually getting a workout, and and that's what counts. Uh, so uh, despite this this uh, new uh, approach at uh, my physical well being, I did suffer from <laughs> from allergies earlier uh, this month, and boy, it just it just I'm, I, I've always had issue. Well, I shouldn't say always. I've had issues with allergies in the last 10 years, never had problems with allergies before that. But for some reason, in the last 10 years, uh, in the springtime, sometimes, it's not every year, like last year, I didn't, I don't think I had any issues with this. Uh, but in years previous, uh, it just kind of hits me and, you know, you get the get the runny nose and in, uh, just general feeling icky and, you know, itchy eyes and stuff like that. But uh, uh, this time, it kind of hit me like the Thursday before it really hit me, which was on Saturday. And Thursday, I was just, just kind of not feeling well. And I was noticing I was sneezing a lot, you know, you know that kind of stuff. I don't want to get any you know, icky details. But, but Friday, it hit me. I felt like I was actually coming down with a cold or even the flu, the way I was feeling. And, uh, and you know, Friday night, I was just, just feeling really crappy. And... Um, uh, just, like I said, it felt like, like I, I was, I was congested and it just felt like I was just getting sick. And then Saturday came and it was just like, you know, <laughs> apologies. Um, like a faucet just got turned on with my nose. It's just like, constant blowing my nose. It was gross. And I, I hate it. I hate that part of, of allergies. And the worst part was, is that that was the day that I had, um, uh, scheduled with Peter to, uh, record a Legion Project podcast episode, and uh, it was it was a bit difficult uh, for me to get through that. And and if you've listened to that episode, you you might you might uh, be able to tell my voice is a little different than normal, and that's why. Uh, but thankfully, by the end of the day, I was feeling a lot better. And then Sunday hit, and I was I was like ten times better. So thankfully, my allergies are. Uh, are really short, uh, the, or the, the impact of them are, is really short on me, uh, which is unlike my daughter who has suffered from allergies pretty much all of her teenage and adult life. And, um, it's, uh, it's an ongoing problem that she has, uh, with that. So I always feel bad for her. And now I, and now I kind of understand what she goes through only in a very, very limited way. So so there's that. And I've also had some back issues that are, oh man, I, it's preventing me from getting enough sleep. I uh, decided to go see a chiropractor. Uh, just saw her the other day. And hopefully that will help alleviate some of these issues. But it's just, for some reason, it's like a switch turned on. And I'm having all these back issues again that I have not had in months. And I don't understand why that is. It might be... In part two, no, no, that I was having my back issues before I started doing all this exercising. And exercising is supposed to help you with that kind of stuff. So anyway, I'm not seeing that benefit yet, but hopefully that'll change. But uh, okay, enough enough about my health. No one wants to hear about your health. It's like when, when someone asks you, how are you doing? And then you give them 10 minutes of, well, you know, I got this problem and that problem. And my knee's bugging me, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, sorry about that. Uh, so anyway, so that, that's, that's what's going on, uh, health wise, personally, uh, at work, I talked about this before I got this, uh, this project that I'm working on that my boss told me that, uh, if I do a really good job, that might look well, uh, or do, do me well in terms of being promoted next year and I'm like, eh, whatever. But, um, I, I actually 
presented my my the status of my my project to him and he was pretty positive or he received it pretty positively had some questions challenged me on a couple things but he said it looks good so um yay <laughs> uh which is good because i think uh, what what it is that i have come up with with a lot of different people's help at work i think that this will be a much better way of producing manuals and data sheets and the like for my company's products in the long run. But I guess we shall see. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, I also put this out on Twitter and, and Instagram not too long ago, but uh, my wife and I are planning a, a trip to a week long trip to Scotland. Uh, specifically, we're, we're going to Edinburgh. We had uh some miles built up, uh, some flight miles built up that are were going to expire, and and so uh, we didn't want to lose out on those, and we so we decided, you know, we wanted to, we wanted to go to to Scotland anyway. Eventually, uh, a few years back, uh, we went for our anniversary, our twenty fifth anniversary. We went to uh, um, Dublin, Ireland, and uh, we wanted to go to Scotland too. So it was like, well, let's just kind of emulate or replicate that trip. Only in Scotland, in Edinburgh. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Hopefully that all goes well and we have a great time. Um, I, I am, uh, this is the thing I put out on, on social media though. If, uh, if anybody who hears this has any recommendations for comic book shops in Edinburgh or, well, no, I have to, it would have to be Edinburgh. I don't want to have to get a, get a taxi or, or rent a car to go anywhere else, but, um, uh, please uh, let me know. I would love to to visit some local shops and uh, discover some, uh, preferably some uh, Scottish uh, made comic books, as I did when when I went to a shop in Dublin. So uh, yeah, let me know. You can you can uh, ping me on social media at Longbox Review, pretty much anywhere, or you can send email to me at longboxreview at gmail dot com. I would love to hear your suggestions. Okay, some uh, some other things, uh, entertainment-wise. So I don't know how much you follow um, uh, gaming, um, uh, MMOs, uh, but uh, there was a game that I absolutely loved to play. It was called City of Heroes. I, I've mentioned this on the podcast before, but uh, it was the best game ever. <laughs> Uh, it's literally the best game ever for me. Uh, I've never played a game uh, that I loved more than this game. Anyway, it shut down a few years back. Uh, stupid decision by the company that owns it. But uh, news came out, this is about a month ago, I guess, that somehow some people got a hold of the code and was running a secret server that uh, certain people in the know could play City of Heroes, and uh, one of the one of those members outed the secret server, and now it's it's very public knowledge. Uh, it uh, it's out there for people to play if you know where to find it. Uh, but it does make me wonder. There there was a there was a uh, Kickstarter. It's the only gaming Kickstarter I've participated in or contributed to. Uh, it's called City of Titans, and it's and it's it's a bunch of fans. It's it's being done by a bunch of fans of City of Heroes, and what they were what they set out to do was build from the ground up a City of Heroes like MMO game, and uh, they've been developing this for several years now, and so when this whole City of Heroes secret server information came out. And uh, uh, all that stuff. Uh, I started wondering, well, what does that mean for this other game that's being developed that I, you know, gave them fifty bucks f- to to develop, you know, years ago? And uh, I just got an email from the the team uh, announcing that they're close to uh, bringing people in for some beta testing. So, not sure what's going to happen there. Um, uh, but at least with that game, if it actually does get released, you know, that's, that's a, that's, that's a place for me to go and play a superhero that I create. So I'm, I'm still hoping that city of Titans can, can pull it off, 
but if City of Heroes, if if that team uh, can negotiate rights with the parent company that killed the game to allow it to for people to keep playing you know i i will play that game too um or instead of just depending on what's going on there but i just find the whole it's not really a competition but it is it is it kind of it isn't it kind of is in a way uh so i'm really curious how that's going to all fall out i would hate to see city of titans just be dumped after all this time because city of heroes returns in some fashion so uh but you know that's i guess that's the name of the game pardon the pun uh, so there's that. Uh, other entertainment things I wanted to talk about real quick. Uh, a few movies, some TV, some other stuff. But uh, I've been in a, a uh, James Bond movie watching kick lately. And uh, last month, sometime in April, I watched the final, well, not the final final, but because uh, uh, I've already seen Never Say Never Again, but all of the James Bond movies in the seventies, up up to the seventies, right before um, Roger Moore takes over as James Bond, I watched all those uh, Sean Connery Bond movies, and I have to say, how did that movie franchise survive? Given um, given those movies, because I don't, <laughs> some of them were just really kind of boring, uh, or at least had long boring parts to them. Uh, bon, uh, Connery's Bond, while, you know, he's, he's fun to watch, uh, there's, I don't know, he, he's, he doesn't come across as really competent or, or to be fair, he's extremely, extremely lucky in the situations he's in because the guy should have died several times over. And I know that's part of the fun of the Bond films. Don't get me wrong, but uh, I just I, I'm amazed that they kept making those those movies. And so now, I'm, as I'm transitioning from uh, Connery's Bond to Roger Moore, and I've never seen any of the Moore movies. I've never seen Moore. I've never seen Dal- uh, uh, Dalton's. I've seen a couple of uh, what's his name? Um, uh, oh boy, uh, the 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 '90s Bond guy. Uh, I'm totally blanking on his name shoot he was he was uh in the mama mia movies more recently that's the only thing i can think of he was also in a tv show that i loved i can't oh my god my memory sucks these days uh it'll occur to me later but anyway so um uh i'm not a big fan of roger moore but i am going to continue on watching these just to because i because I, I like the bond concept i guess more so than I like the movies, apparently. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, of course, the, the 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 big movie of the year is uh, Avengers Endgame. Uh, we went and watched that the the same weekend that it came out, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. I I think I agree with uh, some other people that I have seen on social media saying that they prefer uh, Infinity War. They uh, that's a better movie overall than Endgame. Uh, but you know, there were a lot of good things about Endgame. I know I won't get into details because, you know, not everybody gets to see the movie, uh, when everybody else does, but, um, there's a, there's a few scenes in, in that movie. It's like, yes, it's, 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 it's not a surprise. It's, it's expected that you're going to see some of these things, but man, when it happens, you still feel like cheering. Uh, it's like, this, this great culmination over the last 10 years that, that they've been building up to this. Um, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It, I definitely need to watch it again. I've only seen it once in the theater. Uh, I'm sure since we bought infinity war, did we buy infinity war on Blu-ray? I think we did, but so, you know, my wife would probably want to get in game as well. Um, I'm not so much on buying, uh, superhero movies on disc anymore. But uh, anyway, we'll see. I, I need to watch it again. So it, whether whether I get the get a, a Blu-ray or I get uh, or I you know when it comes out on uh, to be streamed, I'll watch it again there and see if I if it still lives up to the hype that I have internalized from that one viewing. 
More recently, uh, ga- the, uh, the HBO show Game of Thrones has, uh, well, as of this recording, it ended, the series finale aired two nights, uh, two days ago. And so uh, last weekend, my wife, or no, not last weekend, it was, yeah, well, well it was last weekend, but uh, uh, f- the Friday before now, um, uh, we signed up for a free seven-day trial for HBO Now, and we, my wife and I have been uh, watching the final season of Game of Thrones. And um, boy, uh, I, I've I've tried really hard not to not to read any spoilers online. And uh, there are a few things that, uh, unfortunately, you know, as I'm scrolling through Twitter, I see something, and uh, got a f- had a few things kind of spoiled, sort of. Uh, but for the most part, uh, it's been you know uh, a, a journey of discovery watching these episodes, and I honestly don't understand the outrage that I heard about and read about online about this season. I, uh, I can understand, you know, one character, something that that character does in an episode that seems kind of contrary to what we've seen before. Uh, but they also laid the groundwork for, to me anyway, they laid the groundwork for that character behaving in this way. So I I don't understand uh, the controversy here. Um, I think it's kind of silly too, especially that that uh, that petition that is <laughs> that online petition uh, demanding that HBO redo season eight with all new writers. Blah blah blah. Oh my God, get a life, guys! It's just a TV show. Uh, you know, people, creative people don't make things for you; they make things that you may or may not enjoy. I mean, that's just that's just how. That's how creative works. That's how art works. So anyway, uh, I'll get off that soapbox. But uh, anyway, I, we're we're enjoying it. Uh, we have we have one more episode to watch. My wife uh, is currently traveling for business purposes, and she won't be back for a couple. Well, no, uh, yeah, a couple of days at this point. Um, so as soon as she gets back, though, that night we're going to watch that final episode and decide for ourselves uh, how Game of Thrones. How well Game of Thrones did with its ending. Uh, we, uh, speaking of my wife and I, we went to a concert uh, in, a, in a nearby venue. Uh, we went to see, because she is a big fan of his, Chris Daughtry. Uh, if you don't know who he is, look him up. He uh, he was a uh, American Idol contestant some years ago. I, I, think, well, I think it was about 10 years ago now. Anyway, he he didn't win, but uh, he was he was pretty popular because uh, he he brought a you know a, a rock and roll sensibility to the show at that time. Uh, I, anyway, I wasn't all that keen on on, on going because I you know, you know Daughtry's fine. You know, I, I hear his songs because my wife uh, has him on her playlist, and so whenever we're traveling, you know, I'll hear a Daughtry song here and there. No big deal. Uh, but we had a great time. We went with. Uh, my brother-in-law and his wife, and uh, yeah, we had we had dinner together. Went and saw the show. Had a great time. Uh, but the nice thing about this uh, was, I mean, that was nice. But the the unexpected nice thing uh, out of this was the opening act uh, for Daughtry was a man. I think his name was Dan Leis. Anyway, he was the lead singer of the band Augustana. Uh, I found out later, but. Um, he uh, played some songs that I was like, "Ooh, that that sounds pretty cool," and so I uh, on s- uh, last Sunday, yeah, last Sunday, just a few days ago, when I was mowing the lawn, I um, put on on Spotify. I found an Augustana playlist, and I just started playing a bunch of, of Augustana songs, and I really like this band. Um, there's a, there's a few songs like uh, "Steal Your Heart" was I think like the kind of like the big song with me that I really, really enjoyed. I I think they're mostly known for a song called Boston, um, which I think made the rounds on certain TV shows, you know, some years ago. Um, You know, they they kind of made a splash uh, a a while back, but uh, the band eventually kind of dissolved and Dan's out there doing his own thing. But uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, So, you know, if you're looking for something new, I guess, you know, check out Augustana or Dan Leas, I should say. 
But uh, so yeah, we had, we had a good time there. Let's see, podcast wise, uh, uh, my my friend uh, George from the uh, now defunct George and Tony Entertainment Show has started his own. Well, I should say new podcast with uh with some a couple co-hosts and they are Kristen and Rodney and uh so this is called Meanwhile at the Podcast and so this is a a show about pop uh pop culture fandom and the fun stories of everyday life as told by uh the hosts so i've uh downloaded i think they've released 3 episodes at this point I've downloaded, listen, I'm listening to them uh, as as I go, along with everything else that I listen to podcast-wise. But uh, if you enjoy conversations about popular, popular culture, including comic books, but also film and art, uh, Rodney's an artist, it's turning out to be uh, quite an interesting and eclectic uh, group of conversations. So I'm really enjoying that, and, and you should check it out. And uh, I just... Listen to the second episode of a new, I think it's an NPR um, uh, podcast called White Lies. And so if you're a fan of um, investigative reporting where they they build up this story about a, a case, uh, this is one. This is, um, I don't know if it's, if the podcast is only about this case or if they're going to do, you know, like seasons where, you know, this season they're doing this case and another, the next season they'll do a different case. But anyway... Uh, this this uh, series of White Lies episodes is about the 1965 murder of a preacher who was attacked in Selma, Alabama, like I said, 1965, uh, during the Civil Rights Movement, and he later died of his injuries. And so there were some men that were charged with the, the murder. They were acquitted back in 1965. And so uh, these journalists are going going through uh, uh, all of the, 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 the testimony and paperwork and talking to witnesses and talking to people that were there um, to, try, to try and get to the bottom of this. Who actually killed this man? And uh, uh, it's, it's been very interesting. Uh, you know, it's about, it's about uh, race relations. It's about the, the, the legal system. Um, you know. The stories we tell ourselves to make ourselves feel better about our culture, it's its a very interesting take on, or it's, it's very interesting in that it's using this case as a, uh, a springboard to delve into a lot of these kind of hot button topics. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where that leads me. And finally, speaking of podcasting, uh, this is something I've been thinking about talking about for a while now. So... In the nearly ten years that I've been podcasting, I've I've had um, uh, several people on as co-hosts, starting with my my good buddy Travis, um, George, Peter, um, others uh, as well. But I've also been a, a guest on other people's shows, and uh, but this is so. But the, the thing I, want, I wanted to just kind of throw out there was it's it's always kind of amazed me, not amazed me. That's that's not right. It's it very much interests me uh, how much trust we have in the people that we uh, have on our shows and who have us on their shows. And by that I mean, whenever I've interviewed someone, I had a guest on a show. Um, you know, uh, we will record um, stuff, or, or at least we'll be chatting. Usually I'm recording uh, right at the beginning uh, if, if it's someone, especially if it's someone that I'm, uh, or that's someone that who is new to the sh- to my show, I'll, I'll be recording from the get-go just in case there's some uh, nugget in there that I want to include in the show. And sometimes the, the conversation is just really organic and uh, we, we are suddenly actually talking about what we want to talk about without any formal introduction. And so that's why I record that stuff. But then, you know, I, I stitch it all together. And, you know, so I'm editing. And so there's, that's where this, this trust, this idea of this, this, this trust comes in, you know, because my co-hosts have never, ever said to me, I would, I would like to have some sort of, um, 
editing or um, say so in what gets put out there. They have just trusted me to edit together a show uh, that is good and presentable and, and um, you know, doesn't, you know, like some people may may uh, let slip a, a curse word, for example, right? And so I try to be on my show, for the most part, um, you know, uh, rated PG at most. And so I might, I might edit out uh, a slip of the tongue, right? For example, but you know, things similar to that, where, uh, I might, might take out a little snippet of here and there, or I will, I will shorten a conversation, you know, like we, we've talked about this thing and then we, you know, sometimes in conversations you start to repeat yourself. I know you know this because you listen to my show and I do that a lot, <laughs> but I will, I'll sometimes take that repetitive stuff out in the interest of time. Uh, and so, but, but again, um, my co-host is trusting me to, uh, present the conversation, um, you know, in its, in its best intentions. Uh, and I, I just find that very fascinating, uh, that there is that implicit trust that we podcasters, at least we, uh, unprofessional, no, un- unprofessional, that's not the right word. Uh, uh, we amateur podcasters, I'll, I'll, I'll say that, um, have for and with each other. I, I just, I really dig that. Uh, I, I, I just really appreciate the, the trust that, uh, my co-hosts have with me and, and that I have with them when I'm a guest on the show. I've, you know, I, I, there's only been one time where I've asked, uh, someone to edit something out that I said. Um, and it wasn't even a bad thing. It was just that, I was concerned that um, someone might take that the wrong way uh, because there, you know, the audio medium. There was no context there. It was just kind of something I said, uh, and so I asked Peter for one of the Legion Project podcasts to just kind of take that out. That's the only time I've ever done that. And again, like I said, it, now, I'm, now I'm repeating myself, but uh, uh, it was not it was not a bad thing per se. It was just a perceptual issue that I, I wanted to avoid. So, but, but I, I know I just, I just really like that. I just, I really enjoy and, and I, and I um, appreciate the trust that we have in each other. So I don't know why I just want to talk about that, I guess. So anyway, uh, you know, love your podcast co host I guess this is the, is the theme. I don't know. <laughs> and that, you know, uh, anyway, um, uh, like I said before, because of various things, um, I haven't been podcasting as much. I just kind of took, uh, sometimes these, these little hiatus, hiatuses just kind of sneak up on me. Usually it occurs around the end of the year during the holidays where I'm just really busy with, you know, um, Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's and all that stuff. But for some reason, it just kind of hit me here in, um, uh, late April, early May, uh, to, to take a bit of a break. But, uh, you know, sometimes I just need to, I just need to recharge the battery, so to speak, but there's, you know, there's more stuff coming. I'm, I'm not, I'm not stepping away. I'm not pod fading, but, and, and this is evidence of that because this will be the, the first time I recorded a solo show in a, in a little bit, but, uh, well, I'll get back to it. I may not do as many shows as I've been doing. I've been, tr- uh, almost had a weekly release there for a while. I don't know that I'll continue to do that. I'm going to focus more on quality versus quantity. So we'll see how that goes. I may just get back into it and be so excited that I have to release a bunch of things uh, weekly anyway. So who knows? I'm not a professional at this. I just do what I want to do. <laughs> uh, and which is apparently um, yakking at you for quite a while here about about me. So anyway, um, that's all I have for this. Uh, the gutters catch up uh, of my life and what's going on. So, um, you know, let me know if you have any questions about this or if you have any gen- uh, other questions about anything at all. Love to uh, uh, chat with you, so to speak, through this audio medium that I have grown to love over the last 10, uh, nearly 10 years. Uh, so uh, please do so. Uh, please send me messages at longboxreview at gmail.com or you can do so on social media at longboxreview. And with that, I will leave you. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.